The CNN has confirmed that Kurt Volker, President Trump's Ukraine diplomat, who's uh, mentioned in the whistleblower complaint, has now suddenly resigned. We're joined by the former Republican chairman of the House Intelligence Committee, Mike Rogers. He's a CNN national security commentator. Mike, thanks so much for joining us. So give me, give me your quick reaction. Uh, how significant is this resignation? Is it another admission of some potential wrongdoing? Um, I would be cautious not to say it was an admission of wrongdoing other than, hey, this thing is getting messy. I've got other work to do. He was a, uh, Volker was a former ambassador to NATO, so he has experience. Uh, but <laughs> getting under this much scrutiny certainly doesn't look good, I have to tell you that. I mean, it tells me that people are starting to distance themselves uh, from what they fear is, is a, a coming investigation. It'll be interesting to hear what he has to say about all of his uh, communications with Rudy Giuliani as far as Ukraine is concerned. We may find out details of President Trump's call with Ukraine's leader as soon as today. While you were sleeping, the late night show played its version. Hello, this is Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky. Hello, this is the President. Congratulations on sure. Chernobyl. Chernobyl was a horrible tragedy. Great ratings. What can I do for you, Mr. President? Give me some jerk. Go on Sleepy Joe. I don't think I can help with that. How would you like to wake up in the morning next to the head of a horse? Do you know, asking a foreign power to help you is an impeachable offense. To me, it's a dirty word, the word impeach. It's a dirty, filthy, disgusting word. Where do you stand and grab them by the p***y? I'm fine with it. Didn't you do the same thing with Russia, asking them for dirt on Hillary in the 2016 election? But this is what I'm good at. Sorry, Mr. President. <laughs> Ukraine is going into a tunnel. I have to go. <laughs> wow, some hard work by editors. We didn't Woo. expect one of those lines. Stephen uh, Colbert's team. Down. Wow. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Marie Grover, who turns 100 years old today, and I'm so honored that she's my fan. Happy birthday to you. sending you so much love and a huge congratulations on 100 years. Um, what an amazing life. Birthday, Marie. Right back, you So what is this? What is all of this? <laughs> this is uh, basically our immigration case and somehow uh, how we are trying to make a life in the U.S. I noticed a couple of little stains there. <laughs> yeah, the stain is for uh, once I was really uh, upset about everything and threw everything into garbage can. You're ready to just be done with the whole thing? Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, it's, I'm done. This is Mehdi Ostad Hassan. He's at the center of a landmark lawsuit that could affect the U.S. immigration system and many other immigrants who want to live and work in the United States. I am paying for my release. The ACLU is representing Ostad Hassan in a class action lawsuit that accuses Donald Trump and U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services of holding his application for extra vetting, in part because he's a Muslim who has lived and traveled to Iran. We have been going through this for a few years now. I did notice this writing. Can you tell me what it means? It says that, Ya Rab, Nazare to bar negardat bar gashtan ruzgar sahlas. Means, oh God, I hope I do not lose your attention. Ustad Hassan first applied for a green card five years ago. He says the long delay has affected his job and his family. There have been times when he was not allowed to work or buy a house. He hasn't been back to Iran since 2014. I just want my immigration to go through because I just need to see my family. One day I may receive a call and I hear that my mom or dad, one of them were passed. What am I going to do? So if you tried to fly to Iran to see your parents... If I leave this country, it would be impossible for me to come back. 
Ostad Hassan's lawyer believes his green card application was flagged by a little-known national security program called CARP. CARP is like another program that a lot of Americans know about, which is the no-fly list, that you could end up on the no-fly list and not know how you got there. He, he still doesn't really know for sure that he was subjected to this program. He doesn't know. Under CARP, USCIS flags applicants for additional vetting if the government believes their application presents a potential national security concern. The ACLU counters that CARP unfairly targets Muslim immigrants and immigrants from Muslim-majority countries. Knowing what I know now about the program, it's impossible for me to look at this and not see Mehdi's religion as a part of it. Immigration officials say Ostad Hassan omitted some significant facts when applying for a student visa to study in the United States in 2009, including his membership in the student branch of an Iranian organization called the Besiege. Basically, when I was a student, the only available organization was Besiege because Basij was responsible for cultural activities, religious activities. In 2019, the Trump administration designated the Iranian Revolutionary Guard Corps and its subsidiary organizations, including the Basij, as foreign terrorist organizations. USCIS declined to answer CNN's questions about CARP or Ostad Hassan's case, citing the pending litigation. In a statement, a spokesperson said that the agency fairly identifies, vets, and adjudicates applications that present national security or egregious public safety concerns. I love North Dakota. North Dakota gave me my wife, love of my life, and not only that, best friend that I have. Uh, this is uh, one of uh, our labs. Here we actually, we designed a, a drilling rig. Really? Ustad Hassan works at the University of North Dakota as an assistant professor in petroleum engineering. His research is being partially funded by the U.S. government. U.S. <laughs> Geological Survey is like, Mehdi, please help us understand yeah, yeah, what is in these rocks. Yep. And USCIS is like, get the hell out of the country. Yeah, yeah. Maybe Thanksgiving time, I don't remember this Most normal people, they, yeah. they, they have to deal with the fact of fighting over dishes in the sink or which we still do fight we about. We just do fight about that. <laughs> but we, you know, we have this other level of, of things that we have to worry about. Like, are we going to have to move? Are we going to stay here? What's yeah. going to happen to us? We shouldn't be punished for, for being under scrutiny because of some vetting process that's not clear of exactly what are they vetting or what are they doing. I guarantee you they don't do this on every single application. In April, almost five years after he first applied, Ostad Hassan's green card application was rejected for a second time. He could be deported at any time, whether or not a judge rules in his favor this spring. It's a class action lawsuit, which means the outcome could affect thousands of immigrants who suspect CARP has played a role in delaying their applications as well. If I pay the price, at least uh, things get better for Everybody. That's a lot to have on your shoulders, though, isn't it? Uh, definitely, definitely. But I think uh, I am able to handle that. <laughs>